It was a gusty night in April, shortly after my marriage and my wife being away on a visit to her half-sister. I was seated alone before my office fire. I had dropped my novel from sheer weariness. Its puny plot made me tired after all the plotting I had seen with Holmes, and my mind was made up to go to bed when there came a sharp ring at the doorbell. It can't be a patient, thought I. I've not had one of those for six months. Perhaps it's Holmes. I will wait and see. Once more settling into my chair, I heard a step on the threshold, and turning my head, I beheld not Holmes, but Lestrade, the Scotland Yard detective. Good evening, Dr Watson, said he, and sorry to drop in on you at such an hour. Not a word, Lestrade, I interrupted. You're welcome at any time. Take the basket chair. You'll find the tobacco and the coal scuttle, pushing it towards him, and the brandy flask and the clock. Long association with Holmes had made me very much like him and my little household habits. And now, Lestrade, I continued, when he'd helped himself to tobacco and drink, what is it that I can do for you? For a moment, Lestrade hesitated, then summoning his voice, he spoke. Fact is, doctor, he began, I've been coming to see you for a long time. I've got a little bone to pick with you, Dr. Watson, and there's no sense in waiting any longer before getting down to it. Do you know, Dr. Watson, for if it wasn't for you, I'd be the most celebrated sleuth in Scotland Yard, or any other yard for that matter. You surprise me, Lestrade, I replied, completely taken back by the man's speech. In what way have I hampered you? In what way, he replied, bristling. Why, by spreading before the public all the barefaced manner, all the little understandings that Holmes and I have between us. What? You accuse me of, wait a bit, my dear doctor, and you'll see. Take the case of the six apple cores, for instance. After I had failed, and Mr Holmes had succeeded, and he had fitted the cores to the skins and traced the apple to pits, the fruiters on Tottenham Court Road, what did Mr Holmes say? Answer me that, Dr Watson. What did Mr Holmes say? I think he yawned, Lestrade, I said with a smile and added, if I remember rightly, how dreadfully commonplace crime was becoming. Yes, he said that true enough, admitted my visitor, but he said something else beside, and to me, he was willing, and said so, that I should take credit for the arrest. And you don't want your name to appear, said I. Not at all, said he. The work is his own reward. Next thing I know, Dr Watson... I see on the news stalls the adventure of the six apple cores and poof, I find myself an imbecile, a fool, a laughing stock of Scotland Yard. Why, my word, it was only today that the chief inspector took me on one side and said, Lestrad, we've been thinking of making you a doorman. I won't stand for it, Dr Watson. I was about to speak when Lestrade renewed his protests. And this isn't the only time either, Dr Watson. It was the same in the case of the three-legged toadstool and the strange affair of the yellow first mate and the four cracked eggs and then the mysterious business of the doorless dog kennel. All was all right until your stuff came out and then it was, Hello, here he comes, gents. London's prized Bobby. Everywhere I went. Well, Lestrade, said I, as the detective paused for breath. What do you want me to do about it? Do about it, Dr Watson, he returned. All I want you to write one home story with Holmes left out and Lestrade in, and nothing but Lestrade, thick, all through it. Just think of my reputation, Doc, a doorman, me. And so... Just to oblige him, I wrote this story, for I always did like Lestrade. The end. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.
I've been Steve. Bye-bye.